I hope you remember what we studied in the previous lecture about rational numbers. But for starters, let's take a recap. So we studied about what are rational numbers, about their uses, about whole numbers and natural numbers, and even about integers. And then we ended while reading the properties of rational numbers, that is the closure property, commutative property, associative and distributive as well. And we also solved a few questions. So, let's go further in our journey to decode the topic rational numbers. We will start with the topic negation of a number. Let's understand it in this way. For a rational number a by b, a by b plus 0 equals a by b. That is, when 0 is added to any rational number, the result is the same rational number. Here, 0 is known as the additive identity for the rational numbers. So, it's called what? The additive identity of the rational numbers. Now, if, if I add a by b to its negative, then obviously I can write it in the form that negative of that number, summation with the, that number itself. And this is going to give what? This is going to give me 0. Then it can be said what? That the additive inverse or negative of a rational number a by b is what? Negative of a by b. Also negative of a by b is the additive inverse or negative of a by b. For example, the additive inverse of negative of 21 by 8 is what? That is negative of that number. So it will be what? Positive of 21 by 8. So let's move to the next concept that is reciprocal of a rational number. For any rational number a by b, a by b into 1 is going to be 1, a by b. That is when any rational number is multiplied by 1, the result is the same rational number. Therefore, 1 is called the multiplicative identity for the rational numbers. 0 was the additive identity, whereas 1 is going to be what? The multiplicative identity for rational numbers. Now, if a by b into c by d is 1, then it can be said that c by d is reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse of a rational number a by b. Also, a by b is reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse of a rational number c by d. For example, 2 by 3, right? 2 by 3 is a number, but the reciprocal of 2 by 3 is going to be what? 3 by 2. As I can say that 2 by 3 times 3 by 2 is nothing but 1. So the reciprocal of 2 by 3 is going to be what? 3 by 2. Now let's move to the fun part. That is representation of rational numbers on a number line. But before going straight away to rational numbers, let's look at the representation of natural numbers and whole numbers and integers on the number line. We can represent the natural numbers, whole numbers and integers as you can see. So natural numbers start from 1 that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and all up to infinity. Whereas whole numbers is natural numbers and 0 added to it. Whereas integers are these positive numbers, then these negative numbers and obviously 0 as well. So this is how I represent or I can say that in general this is how the representation of integers and whole numbers and natural numbers on a number line is done. Now in order to represent a rational number we are going to do it like this. Now a rational number is a number of the form p by q right. So obviously this p by q can be between the integers as well. Now for example if I say that there is a rational number 2 because obviously 2 can be written in the form 2 by 1. So I can represent this 2 as this. But now when I take the number let's say 2 by 3. How am I going to represent 2 by 3 on number line? Can you see that number here? But let's understand how this representation is done first. So the steps to represent a rational number that is a by n. Where a and n are integers on a number line are 1. So step 1 is divide the distance between two consecutive integers into n parts. For example, if we are given a rational number 2 by 3, we divide the space between 0 and 1 and 1 and 2, etc. into 3 parts. So what they are trying to say is that I need to represent a rational number 2 by 3, right? 
So I need to divide the distance between all the integers in three parts. That is from 0 to 1 also I will divide it in three parts. From 1 to 2 also I will divide it in three parts. Then from 2 to 3 also I will divide it in three parts and so on up till infinity. And also on the negative side as well. If I want any negative number to be represented on the number 9. And the next step is label the rational number till the range includes the number you need to mark. And similar steps can be followed for negative rational numbers by repeating the steps towards the negative direction. So basically what they mean to say is that I was telling you that if you need to represent 2 by 3 on number line, you have to divide the distance between any two integers in 3. Alright, but now you need to represent any number that is x by 3. And in this case, x is 2. So what I'm going to do is I'll start from 0. From 0 to this is going to be 1 by 3, then this is going to be 2 by 3 and this is the number which I want to represent. It's simple. Now let's take another example to make you people understand. Suppose I need to represent a number 1 by 4. What I am going to do is I'll make a number 9 and then I'll divide all the distance between 0 and 1, 1 and 2 and 2 and 3 and all that up to infinity and obviously on the left hand side as well in 4 parts. Why? Because the denominator is 4. So what I'm going to do is I'll divide it in four parts. So this is one part, this is two part, this is third part and this is the fourth part. So first, second, third and fourth. So these are four parts. Now I need to represent the first part of the four parts which I have divided, right? So this is the zero part. Now this is going to be the first part. So this is the number one by four. So basically this is how the representation of rational numbers are done on the number line. Now let me ask you something. Can there be rational numbers between any two given rational numbers? Yes, of course there can be. But the number of rational numbers between any two given rational numbers isn't defined. Unlike that of whole numbers and natural numbers. For example, between natural number 2 and 10, there are exactly 7 numbers. But between 2 by 10 and 8 by 10, there are infinite numbers that could exist. There are two methods as to how we can find out all these rational numbers. Let's study them one by one. So method one says what? Method one says we have to find the equivalent fraction of the given rational numbers and write the rational numbers which come in between these numbers. These numbers are the required rational numbers. Now to understand this properly, let's do an example. Example says find the rational number between 1 by 10 and 2 by 10. So what are we going to do? As we can see that there are no visible rational numbers between the number 1, and, 1 by 10 actually and 2 by 10. So we need to write the equivalent fraction that is I have 2 by 10. Now can I multiply the numerator and denominator by 10 because that is just not going to make any changes to the original fraction that I have. So it's going to be what? It's going to be 20 by 100. So now I can write all the rational numbers between 1 upon 10 to 20 by 100. And what are these numbers going to be? It can be 2 by 100, 3 by 100, 4 by 100 and similarly up to what? Up to 19 by 100. So what are these? These all are the rational numbers between 1 by 10 and 2 by 10. Alright. So this is how to apply method 1 to actually find the rational numbers between any two given rational number. So let's see method number 2. So we have to find the mean or the average of the two given rational numbers and the mean is actually the required rational number. So let's again solve a question to actually understand the problem. What we need to do is we need to find the rational number between 1 by 10 and 2 by 10 again. Now to find the mean, we have to divide the sum of the two rational numbers by number 2. That is what I can do is, I can do is, I can write 1 by 10 plus 2 by 10 upon 2. So this is going to be the mean of these two rational numbers and whatever answer I'll get after solving this, that is going to be my rational number between these two numbers, right? So if I solve, can I write this in the form 3 by 10 into half and the answer is going to be nothing but 3 by 20. So 3 by 20 is going to be the required rational number and we can find more by continuing the same process with the old and the new rational number. So basically the thing is what they are saying is 
that I need to find a rational number between 1 by 10 and 2 by 10. So suppose it's nothing but 1 by 10, comma 3 by 20 and then it is 2 by 10. Okay. So we have this rational number that is between 1 by 10 and 2 by 10. Now suppose you need to find more rational numbers between 1 by 10 and 2 by 10 or any 2 by XYZ given rational number that is given in your question or if you are curious enough to find rational numbers between any two rational numbers yourself. So what is the next step you can do? What you can do is again you can take mean of these two numbers that is the old one and the new one and then there will be a rational number x between these two right. And similarly you can take the mean of 3 by 20 and 2 by 10 and there will be a rational number but y between these two. Now if you want to find more rational numbers then again you can take mean of 1 by 10 and x and then you can find a rational number a. And again you can take a mean of x and 3 by 20 and find a rational number b. Similarly, mean of 3 by 20 and y and you will find a rational number c. And again, a mean between y and 2 by 10 and you will find a rational number d. So this process, you can actually continue to find as many rational numbers as you want to find. So the question states, find a rational number between 1 by 2 and 1 by 3. Now what is going to be the solution? Obviously, I have to do what? I have to take mean of this, right? So that is 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 upon 2. This is the mean. And now if I solve it, I can actually write it like 5 by 6 into half, which is going to be nothing but 5 by 12. So a rational number between 1 by 2 and 1 by 3 is going to be nothing but 5 by 12. So let's recap quickly. Today we understood what is negation of a number, then what is reciprocal of a number, then how to represent rational numbers on number line, and finally, how to actually find rational numbers between two given rational numbers. So, we have reached the end of our discussion. Hope you found that helpful. Now, you can visit EduRef to attempt the respective test so as to check your understanding of the topic. You can also find more amazing content on other subjects like social studies and science and what not. So, what are you waiting for? Go and check it out. Also, stay tuned for more amazing videos. Thank you.